How's it going everybody? This is Beat the Bush. If you're about to buy an EV, you might be thinking how the heck you're gonna charge it in your garage. Many people might think that it costs thousands of dollars because you need to have an electrician come in and hardwire a charger into your wall. But then there are ways to do it so that you don't absolutely need a hardwire connection that are a lot cheaper. You can just plug it into the wall if you have those sockets. If you're looking to buy a Tesla, this is the mobile charger. Normally it comes with the regular output plug right here, the same plug that you plug everywhere in your house. This one is terribly slow. It'll charge about six miles an hour into a Model 3. I'm just gonna use Model 3 as an example because different cars have different kinds of electricity requirements per mile. So if you use this plug, about six miles. You can buy a mobile charger. It used to come with a Tesla, but now you have to pay $230 for it. If you have this kind of plug, which I have right over here, see, it fits right in. This is called a 6-50. Six, six is the designation of this type of plug. 50 means that it can go up to 50 amps. We'll charge your car at 30 miles an hour. This is in comparison to the Tesla hard wire solution, which will cost you quite a bit to get it all wired up and it can only do up to 44 miles an hour. So if you buy this little thing, you can already do 30 miles an hour, not bad, right? $45 for 30 miles an hour. But if you want to go something a little bit faster than that, you can get this guy, which is the Autel Maxi charger. You see the plug over here, it's the same as the previous one, but this charger is a little beefier. It can do up to 40 amps, which means it can do up to 37 miles an hour all without doing any electrician hard wiring. This is a 6-50. You may not have this in the house. If you don't have a connector like this, you could potentially connect it to your dryer. When you're charging your car, you're not using the dryer. And there's like a switch to where you don't have to keep on unplugging and plugging something else in. Today, I just wanna show you guys how easy it is to install this thing. Just as a disclaimer, this thing has a lot of high voltages and very, very high current. It should be installed by a qualified electrician. First thing that we wanna do is make sure that the power to this guy is off first, and it helps to double check that it does not have energy in it. AC voltage mode and just stick in my probes to make sure there's no energy. 247.8. I like to see it turn off as I turn off the breaker to make sure it really is zero. So now it, this is not energized. Plug this guy in right here. This thing is a little heavy. If you just put screws right in the plaster, it'll just rip right off. So you need to drill into the wood over here. Now I know where it's gonna go. If you guys are doing this yourself, you probably don't want to have this whole panel removed already. I just removed it so I can show it to you a bit easier where the two by fours are over here. Otherwise it would be this thing right here that's plastered all over the front of it. So with this off, we can see that the two by fours right here on either side, these two by four studs are separated by 16 inches center to center. So if I go on the right edge of this two by four, this will be the right edge of this two by four. The two by four is not really two inches by four inches, it's actually one and a half inch. If I just go in three quarter inch, just two holes over here, make sure it's level. We want to drill in roughly halfway of this drill bit. So you need these guys to kind of expand and hold on to it. It's very nicely, very easily. Tap it in a little bit. Let's flush. So you line up these screws here. It comes with a little security screw, makes it a little bit harder to steal so people can't just, you know, pull this right off with a Phillips screwdriver and just take it and run. Sneak a screw in there. Just plug this in now. Here's the holster. You got another mounting plate you mount on the wall. Another security screw. I like this holster a lot more than I thought I would. It's on! This is the Tesla connector. You see it matches. Plug it right in. Wave it a little bit. Plug it in. The app says you can go up to 40 amps instead of the usual 32. So let's go all the way up to 40 amps over here. 
40 amps. It says right here it's charging at 35 mile an hour. When I'm not in the car, it's a better indication of how fast it's charging because when I'm inside, it actually consumes some power. So now it says 35 mile an hour, 40 amps, 240 volts, great. On the outside, it's flashing that it's charging. Everything seems to be okay. It's not smoking or anything. The plug here is doing all right. The holster is doing fine. It seems fairly sturdy. I'm not sure if this is gonna come off from the drywall or not, but it seems sturdy for now. If it ever comes off, I might have to mount it to one of the two by fours that's right here instead. So what happens if I try to get out of this? Pull this out. Okay, and I guess instead of using the little clippy holster right here, I can just hang it along with the connector right here. But most of the time I want to bring this with me as well because I want to use the chargers outside that has this connector here. It's all set up now. They even have an app that allows you to check your charging status. You just create some credentials and link this charger to your app with like a little QR code on the side or in the instruction manual. Let me show you guys what the app looks like. Over here, it's already charging and it'll show you the cost, the energy. If you go to the charger here, you can even connect this to Wi-Fi. You can change the maximum current from six amp all the way up to 40 amps. You can set the price that you pay for the electricity. What's quite unique is that if you happen to locate this charger somewhere outside where it's publicly accessible, People can drive by, plug their car in, and you can actually charge other people for charging their car. So you can make some profit that way. When you have your rate of electricity set properly, you can have the cost that you use per month over here at the bottom. Share your charger right at the bottom over here if you click into it. I can't really personally share my charger because this is inside my garage. I don't want anybody, you know, just strangers to come in in here or anything. But that is an option if that is your kind of thing. Under the charge history, you can see how much charge you have done. I actually haven't really charged enough to make any history just yet. And here is the charging screen. Right now I am charging at 1.5 kilowatt per hour. So far I spent 5 cents. I'm gonna go back and change it to 40 amps just to show you guys. Now it's ramping up 5.8 kilowatt, 7.5 kilowatt. Okay, it's ramping up right now. Voltage holding steady at 241.4 volts. It's holding pretty well at 40 amps. Now, if you own a Tesla, there's a thing called schedule charging. You can start the charging at a certain time of day. And let's say I start it at 7 p.m. and I stop it at 8 p.m and the charger is still connected to the car. At some point, it might mysteriously start charging again, which is not your intended behavior. For the Autel app, you can go to scheduled charging and you can change your schedule based on if it's a weekday or weekend. And the special thing about this is that it has a start and end time. For example, if you have a time of use plan where it's a lot cheaper at night, you want to charge only during those cheaper hours and you don't want to run over because if you do run over, you're going to have to pay the higher rate. Those time of use times are getting a little bit more and more narrow as they kind of tweak the utility programs. If you make too much solar, let's say between 12 and 4 p.m. or so, you want to take that extra solar charge from your panels instead of feeding it back to the grid because you don't get paid very much for that. Just stick it into the car. And with this schedule where you can start and stop whenever you want, you can do this all automatically as long as you have the charger connected to the car. Power, you can connect it to the internet. The charging flashes when it's charging. There's Bluetooth. This is how I am reading the information from this charger. And there's also RFID. I hope this video helps take some mystery out of how to charge your car, especially for cheap and not hiring an electrician to do all this work. This thing does come in different versions. You can connect it to this 6-50 plug. There's another plug involved and there's also a wired in method, which requires a lot more skill and probably a qualified electrician to do it. If you guys are interested in purchasing this product, check out my referral link down in the video description below.